Jainism is more accepting than other traditional faiths. While there are multiple sects of Jediism around the world, the Temple of the Jedi Order is one of the most well-known. Former Catholic John Felan founded the temple in 2005. Felan left Catholicism because he couldn't agree with the Church's stances on gay marriages, reproductive rights, and female priests. Felan wanted to commit to a religion that wasn't as rigid. In fact, Jediism converts don't have to renounce other religions in order to live as real Jedi and study the philosophy. The founder noted that religion is not a closed book. There's things people believe that turn out to be false. We are open to change, we question. Jediism combines tenets of other religions. Jediism does not solely use the fictional Jedi Order's faith to substantiate its religion. In fact, certain elements of Zen Buddhism, Taoism, and Christianity are all present in the new faith. The Temple of the Jedi has 16 teachings and 21 maxims that rely on facets from the three aforementioned religions. One teaching, for example, the real Jedi belief states that Jedi maintain a clear mind, which can be achieved through meditation and contemplation. Our minds can become unduly troubled and concerned with the happenings of the world. We must work on overcoming our individual issues through training and diligence. Jediism resonates with people all over the world. The 2001 census reported that thousands of people claimed Jediism as their official religion. Many of those converts wanted the Force-led faith to become a legally recognized religion in England, Wales, Australia, New Zealand, Ireland, and several other countries around the world. In England and Wales, 390,127 people described themselves as Jedi, 3% of the population. Jediism was the seventh largest reported religion there. In New Zealand, more than 50,000 people reported Jediism as their faith, and over 70,000 people claimed it in Australia. Jediism has a long history. While there's a chance you might not have heard of it, Jediism has been around for more than 20 years. It seems to have really gained a following after Return of the Jedi hit theaters in 1983. No one was entirely sure how long the Star Wars franchise would last, the expanded universe hadn't quite kicked off and the prequel trilogy was still just a dream. Many fans sought the Jedi religion as a way to remain connected to their favorite characters. Real Jedi follow a moral code. The followers of Jediism are often called real Jedi. While they might not be able to use the Force to accomplish incredible, physic-defying feats, the real Jedi do follow the same code as the Jedi in the movies. In George Lucas's fictional universe, the code helps light knights remain pure and resist the angry urges of the dark side. The code reminds Jediism converts to abandon ignorance and recklessness in favor of knowledge and harmony. Followers of Jediism are often discriminated against. Some people don't take very kindly to real Jedi. In 2009, founder of the Church of Jediism Daniel Jones was even thrown out of a Tesco store in the UK. He refused to remove his religious hood while shopping, much to the chagrin of employees. Jones reported, that he felt humiliated and claimed, it states in our Jedi doctrination that I can wear headwear. It just covers the back of my head. You have a choice of wearing headwear in your home or at work, but you have to wear a cover for your head when you are in public. 
Real Jedi do not worship Star Wars or George Lucas. Their religion might be associated with Star Wars. The real Jedi don't actually worship the franchise or franchise creator George Lucas. Jediism's followers don't consider Lucas a god, and the religion is separate from the stories in the movies. Indeed, the movies may be used to teach lessons within the faith. However, the Temple of the Jedi Order believes government officially recognizes some Jedi churches. A staple since the 90s, Jediism finally received official government recognition in 2015. In fact, the Temple of the Jedi Order is the first Jedi organization to be recognized by the U.S. government. Church founder John Felland's group has earned the status of an international ministry and public charity, making the temple a non-profit that is primarily founded with donations. Additionally, donations made to the temple are tax deductible. Hey guys, thank you so much for the support and like and comment down below and also thank you so much for watching and I look forward to see you in the next video then. Take care! Bye!